Hey everybody, Carl Schroof here from Greensock, and today I want to introduce you to GS Dev Tools, which provides you with a powerful interface for controlling your GSAP animations. Let me show you exactly how this tool can help accelerate your animation workflow. So here I have a fairly complex animation. It runs for about a minute and has over 100 tweens. Now let's say I want to tweak the timing of these browser icons swinging in. Right now I think it runs a little bit long. Well, once I've isolated the tween in question, I can take the duration of 8 seconds, bring it down to 3, and then run again. Now unfortunately, I have to sit through this intro again. It may just be a few seconds, but those seconds can turn into minutes, which can turn into frustrating hours. Now of course, GSAP allows me to add labels and seek to those labels, so I could jump through that beginning part, but then I'd have to refresh the browser window every time I want to watch that animation again. Let me show you just how much easier GS Dev Tools makes things. Now since I already have Tween Max and GS Dev Tools loaded, I just have to do gsdevtools.create. Now the next time I run, you're going to see that I have this handy controller bar down at the bottom. I can scrub anywhere I want at the rate that I want. I can increase the time scale, or I can slow it down quite a bit. Now before I wanted to isolate that pendulum swinging browser thing, so I'm going to take the in marker and scrub right to where that browser icon first comes in. And then I'm going to take the out marker and leave it right about here. So now I can loop through this little portion of the animation and I can rewatch what those browser icons are doing. Now the really cool thing about GS Dev Tools is that it remembers these changes that I've made. So if I want to change the ease on this animation, maybe I want to see what a bounce would look like instead, I can do a bounce.ease out. And then the next time I run, check this out. It remembers where the in and out markers were, so I can jump directly to that section. I might pull this out marker in closer here, and then now I can totally just see these icons bouncing in. This gives me an incredible amount of control and time-saving convenience. We can make our Greensock animations even easier to navigate and debug if we give our animations IDs. Here I have the timeline for the compatibility section. Inside the constructor, I'm going to pass in an ID of compatibility. Now check out what happens the next time I run. You're not going to see anything really different in GS Dev Tools, but when you go to the animation menu, you're going to see now that there is a compatibility option. When I select compatibility, it isolates just that timeline for me, so I can see that its duration is 12 seconds, and I can scrub back and forth in that timeline, and of course control it however I want. What's really cool is that if I rerun the demo, GS Dev Tools remembers the last animation that I set in the animation menu, so it goes directly back there. Now we can give IDs to timelines and also individual tweens. So before I was trying to troubleshoot this browser icons animation, and what I can do is give it an ID of icons, and now the next time I run, GS Dev Tools still remembers that I was in compatibility, but I can now select the icons tween from the animation menu. And what's very interesting here is that, again, I can scrub through just that animation of the icon swinging in, but I also see this animation in context of everything that's happening around it, okay? So as those icons are swinging in, I also see the compatibility text animate. So I can get very fine-tuned synchronization happening as I'm debugging. Now I can also programmatically tell GS Dev Tools which animation to default to. So inside of my create call here, I can pass in a config object, and right now I'm going to say that the animation that it should default to is going to be the one named icons. So now the next time I run, it's going to default to icons, even if I had previously selected something like compatibility, the animation setting is going to override the last thing that I saw. So here, on a fresh reload, it's always going to show the animation for icons. I can also set custom in and out points. So I can say something like in time is going to be 6 seconds and the out time is going to be 10. So now the next time I run we're going to see on the global timeline just the segment between 6 seconds and 10 seconds. For the in time and out time you can use time in seconds, you can use a label, or even the name of an animation. So for the in time I could say something like compact Compatibility, because I have an animation name compatibility, and then the next time I run, it's going to take me directly to the compatibility section. Now, sometimes when you're troubleshooting an animation, you want to see a little bit of a lead up into it. You know, it can be a little bit jarring if you jump right to that point in time. 
So I can say that the in time is going to be compatibility minus equals two seconds. So now when I run, check it out. I have a little bit of a lead up, I can prepare myself, and then I see the compatibility section. A really awesome feature of this sort of relative in time is that we can also just say minus equals two if we want to troubleshoot the last two seconds of an entire animation. So here, when I run, you'll see now that the in and out markers are showing me just the last two seconds. I didn't have to add a label or an ID. Super easy. GS DevTools is not only going to help accelerate your development workflow, but it's going to really help with client reviews as well. What I did was I took this animation and every major timeline inside of it, I gave an ID. So now the client, when they're reviewing your work, can jump to any section that they want. Don't make them sit through 45 seconds of animations that have already been approved. Give them these handy controls so they can jump anywhere they want. What's great about this too is that while they're watching the animation, they can give you an exact timestamp of when they want some change made. So they may say, hey, you know what? In the performance section, around 1.77 seconds, I realize that such and such should be changed. This is really gonna help speed up your entire production process and it's something your clients are gonna appreciate as well. Before I go, I just wanna show a few more cool features of GS DevTools. GS DevTools is completely responsive out of the box. Notice how when I make the browser window more narrow, it's eventually going to switch over to our minimal UI, where you just have the play, time scale, and scrubber. As the browser window gets a little bit larger, the full UI comes right back into view. There's absolutely nothing you need to code in order for that to happen. Now, if you prefer this sort of minimal UI and you want to activate it by default, what you can do is just go into the config object of the create function, and you can just do minimal colon true. So now the next time you run, you're going to see that we just have the minimal controller. And there are times when your viewers or clients aren't going to need all the fancy bells and whistles of GS DevTools. Power users are going to appreciate GS DevTools intuitive keyboard controls. I can click spacebar to play the animation and hit it again to toggle it to paused. I can use the right arrow to jump to the end of the animation and the left arrow to jump back to the beginning. I use the spacebar again to play the animation. And if I want to speed it up, I can go through the time scale values by using the up arrow to increase the speed and the down arrow will allow me to slow it down. I showed you previously that I can drag the in and out markers wherever I want, but what's really cool is that while an animation is playing, I can just hit I to set the in marker and then I can hit O to set the out marker. If I want to loop this segment now, I just hit L and it's going to enable looping. So now, pretty much without even using the mouse, I can isolate a part of the animation, study it in depth, and control it. Want to speed it up? No problem. Just hit the up arrow a few times and watch it go faster. If I want to hide GS Dev Tools, I can just hit H and it's gonna go away. Even while it's hidden, I can still use the keyboard controls. So I can pause this animation by hitting spacebar, and I can resume it by hitting spacebar again, and H is gonna bring it back into view. GS Dev Tools is a bonus tool for Club Green Sock members, shockingly in Business Green. So members will have it available in their downloads and can use it anywhere. Just like all Club Green Sock bonus plugins and tools, GS Dev Tools is completely free to use and try on CodePen. Feel free to use it in as many CodePen demos as you like. I hope you've enjoyed this little tour of GS Dev Tools. Believe it or not, I haven't even covered all the features. Be sure to head over to greensock.com slash gsdevtools for more information, tons of demos, and everything you need to get up and running quickly with GS Dev Tools. We're sure you're going to find that this tool can be an integral part of your GSAP animation workflow, and you and your client are really going to appreciate the time-saving benefits. And remember, GS Dev Tools is free to use on CodePen, so you can start using it today in any one of your existing GSAP demos. Plug it in and take it for a little spin. I'm sure you're going to love it. Happy tweening!